president says that uh, Guzin Ampofo hot again, please invite him over market fires and kidnapping. That's on the new crusading guide. The Daily Guide has uh, that same story of Usampo for invited again over fires and kidnap. The Times, please grab 81 secessionists at uh, that demonstration for release of Homeland Study Group leaders. The statesman says $230 million budget for uh, to revamp railways. That's uh, the story. 30 new locomotives, more coaches coming. And kidnap arson suspects name of uh, That's on the statesman. The dispatch has the same story. Please invite Ufuswampofu again over recent happenings and fire outbreaks. The finder says abuse at banking institutions agency to assist customers critical, says Professor Kweku Ichuahene Chima. And we're told that banks' profit saw by 31.5%. Daily Graphic uh, has a big boost for real sector. President approves $230 million for rolling stock. And uh, uh, Gua has launched the 2019 Fetu Afesha Festival. Uh, the BNFT uh, has, a, has a story on housing. We don't have credible mortgage regime. The housing minister's photograph is that he is saying that. Those are some of the papers I have this morning. My guest to do the talking, MP for Ningo Pram Pram, Sam George. Is your honorable Sam George. Good morning. Good morning. Hope you're doing great. Well, uh, difficult times we live in as a country, mm. hard times, but the grace of God abounds. Thanks for joining us. And a member of the NPP's team, Eric Chum, is also here. Good morning. Good morning. Hope guys. you are good too. I'm doing fantastic. Thank, Thank you for joining us. Let's start with a story. Almost every newspaper has a story. Uh, the um, Daily Guy says that the CID of the Ghana Police Service has again invited the embattled national chair of the NDC uh, over recent happenings in the country. It has emerged that the CID's invitation is in respect of rampant kidnappings and fire outbreaks in the country. Uh, the story continues. He has been hauled before a commercial court in Accra together with Deputy Communications Director Anthony Kweku Bwahin over the leaked audio recording containing uh, the chilling strategies the NDC allegedly intends to use for 2020 elections, one being the kidnappings of family members of political opponents. Um, he's in court. Uh, as uh, is facing one count of conspiracy to cause harm, um, they both pleaded not guilty. Now, what is happening now is that he is expected to appear 2 p.m. at the CID headquarters, and according to uh, what Daily Guy says, correspondence from the law enforcement agency, uh, his name was mentioned by some suspects who were arrested in connection with arson and kidnappings that have rocked the country in recent times. The CID uh, has commenced investigations into cases of kidnappings and fire outbreaks. That's so far the story. Uh, on, on some joy, certainly let me start from you because yesterday, uh, clearly from the NDC's National Communication Officer and the Deputy um, uh, General Secretary, Ms. Ufoswampofo, is not appearing before the CID. Is that the case? Well, once again, let me say a very good morning to our viewers. <coughs> and um, let me say that we live in a country where our priorities are completely misplaced. We seem to celebrate mediocrity and seem to promote very ineffective and incompetent individuals. You have a police CID that is basically the criminal investigation department of the Ghana Police Service, taxed with criminal investigation, investigation into all acts that are deemed criminal by the Criminal Offenses Act. You have a situation where three girls have been kidnapped for over six months now. You've had the director general, the head of that CID wing of the head, Ghana Police Service, come and meet the media and tell the media that she knows where the girls are. She knows where the girls are. Those were her words. She didn't say it under duress. She was not being cross-examined by anybody. She addressed the press and said she knows where the girls are. Mm. It's been almost three months. Then post that, 
you have the same director general of CID who should by her now have been fired, sacked for her heartless comments, worsening the pains of those families, issue that apology of a letter to the national chairman of the great National Democratic Congress that what? Her investigations, what investigations? Her investigations point to the fact that the kidnappings and recent fire outbreaks are connected to our national chairman. Now, some suspects have, have mentioned Mr. Fusun. Total claptrap and buffoonery talk. Look, people must bear in mind that this country was worn by the blood and tolls of our forefathers. And we will not sit down for them to run this country down the drain. If the police has failed in the dispatch of their work, the president has supported this mediocrity, why won't you have this kind of silly behavior going on in our country? It's because as citizens, we are not angry enough. We've sat down and allowed people who we pay with our taxpayers' money misbehave and fail on their jobs. And what have we seen? Our president has been promoting her. Our president has promoted her twice in the space of a year. Promoted her to de deputy commissioner of police and now promoted her to commissioner of police. And we hear she's been considered from IGP because she's doing all of this needless political witch hunting. I would be extremely disappointed if Chairman of Fosuampofu makes himself available to the incompetence that you see at the police headquarters today. Isn't it? I mean, Mr. Fosuampofu lives in a country that... Uh, I mean, understands the rule of law. Isn't it right that he appears before the police since his name has been mentioned by suspects? Which suspects have mentioned his name? Which investigation? Wh where did those suspects mention his name before Tiwado came and told the whole country that she knew where the girls are? I mean, some of these things, look, forgive me, for want of a better phrase, it's sheer stupidity. No, but that's too strong a word. No, no, no. I mean, that's why I said for want of a better phrase. Because, look, we cannot continue like this. We cannot continue where a government is failing and to distract from their colossal failure. You have them want to play this kind of cheap secondary school gimmicks. Cheap gimmicks. First, Tiwado says she knows where, he, where, where the girls are. Then the president's own prophet, Ousu Bempa, says he knows where the girls are. Now, it is a suspect. Which suspect? What investigations have led to it? So are we to agree and, and accept that the fires we saw between 2013 and 2016 were caused by Freddie Blay and, and Nanado Danko Akufado at the time in opposition? I mean, look, we are a country of, of people who have gone to school. We, 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 the, the fires in Kumase are simply as a result of this government's insensitivity to the people of Kumase. President Mahama commissioned and started the KJTR Phase 1, the Central Business District built that market it was 95 percent complete in 2016 when we left or two four or said to himself visited that market in october and said that it was ready by january the people will be moved in with president mahama when akufaro took over what did he do he abandoned that market for two years that phase one was supposed to have been completed by march of 2017 the 5,000 store over uh, 10 000, almost 10,000 stores would have been occupied it would have cleared up the the central market and then phase two would have started as we are speaking now by the time we had the, the fires last two weeks you would have had phase two almost completed this government in its insensitivity decided to leave the market people there and a fire has happened you are blaming who over so before would, would he that's clap trap would would he rather want to be arrested by the police Oh, well, if the police wants to go down that route, they can. But you see, you live in a country, and we will see how the police will play this out. You remember that Freddie Blay, then acting chairman of the NPP, was invited by the police for comments he made, and he declined in his in the invitation. Well, because we were, we were a government at the time that thought about the peace and stability of this country, even though he declined the invitation of the police, you did not see a Rambo-style arrest. But you see, this attempt to make the national chairman of the NDC a whipping dog or a whipping horse where they would when the government is failing then they, 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 they fabricate something and throw it at him look the ndc is the largest opposition party we have comfortably over four million supporters as evidenced by even our defeats in the last election you cannot take for us for granted and like the president our, our flag bearer said yesterday during his talk we would not continue to sit down and allow this intimidation 
of our national chairman. If the MPP has failed, they should... Look, you cannot use the intimidation of our national chairman to cover up your colossal failure. The fact that prices are going up, the fact that, as we speak today, the newspapers are reporting four regions, four regions have water shortage. The fact that as we sit down today, you are telling us that you have constructed 117 districts Factories in in, in, in in districts in this country At where we cannot see the factories. 57. So now, they say what? 57. 57 in operation. Even the 57, can we see them? Can they show us how many people have been employed? We live in the districts. We know that that is a lie. You tell us that you give every constituency $1 million per, con uh, per constituency per year. This is the third year. We are talking $3 million. And up till now, you have not delivered $1. And when we ask you, you say you've brought the money. And when we ask you, what did you use the $1 million for? You tell me in Ngo Pram Pram, you've come to build three toilets. Three toilets. When, as we speak okay. today, there is not even one toilet for $1 million. That is the incompetence of this government. And look, we... we, we, we okay, we, wrap up we, for me. Yes, in wrapping up. The president, the IGP, and the CID boss must know that they are paid with our taxes. And that the citizens, as he has asked us to be, will not sit down because our, our own national anthem urges us to resist oppressors rule because this nation was won that the freedom of this nation the independence that we we, we, we celebrate today was won through the toils and bloods of our forefathers we will not sit down today we will not sit down tomorrow for anybody to become a despot in this country not today I'm not tomorrow i'm grateful eric so he says that the the, the chairman of the ndc uh, will not go he said he will be surprised if he he he, he attends the police invitation well, um, thank you very much. Uh, I'd say good morning to the viewers, uh, to uh, Sam. I've been sitting for a while. Um, I thought this was um, a conversation, a, a classic Sam George and the rabble rouser that I know him to be. He has gone that route. I mean, so this name calling and using words like buffoonery and claptrap and stupidity and everything on a platform like this. I would have expected that you'd have stopped him there. Because you see, it does debase the conversation. And what are we talking about? Is it the hypocrisy? The hypocrisy of the NDC and its apparent cheeks and our signs. It's so nauseating that sometimes, I mean, I would have actually restrained to have a conversation on this. Um, today just out of respect but you see on the issue no i mean to to even engage him on a platform like this because it's, it's so disrespectful what has happened and attacking people's personality and if we want to do that and take a pleasure of things that are happening under your watch and the first thing that will come the first refrain that will come is that i am equalizing but that's not the reason why i'm here we are here to have a conversation and engage in a discourse that would inure to our benefit going forward. One, we've all agreed that we want to do this democracy. There's a rule of law. An individual, regardless of the fact that they are a chairman of a political party or an ordinary citizen of this country, has been invited by the CID. What's the big deal about it? And it, what is the, the, the mere fact that he's an NDC chairman, so he can't be asked to come and answer questions, especially when the indication is that people have mentioned his name. I would have expected that in the logical sense of things, you would go mm. answer these questions and it turns out that, well, you have absolutely nothing to, um, to answer for or you can absolve yourself from those allegations. That in itself is much better than having a, a scepter of uh, suspicion hanging over you, over mm. your head. So really this conversation should have been on that route. You see? But he mentioned the former president and flag bearer. You remember there was an incident with Honorable Kennedy Japan, where the former president, uh, John Ajakum Kufo, came out to say that, well, this is a, uh, a political conversation, and it should be actually uh, not, it shouldn't be dealt with with a sledgehammer. What did he say? He came out to say that they would actually use a bulldozer Right, as a retortion to what President Kufo had said. Nobody said anything. Mm. So for me, this whole conversation and this bravado, beating your chest and pointing fingers and try threatening mayhem and causing 
chaos and actually making this country ungovernable, will also not be countenanced by this administration. So this whole, I mean, in the local part, this too known. I see that you can actually take the law into your own hands and do anything in this country, and government will actually countenance that kind of behavior. I don't know where they get that impression from. In any case, this country would hold together. Now, if you want to go to the, 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 the alleged tape and the things that have actually been said on that particular tape, and you have had children missing in this country and markets burning, and the tape actually reiterating the fact that they will make this country ungovernable, and there are people who have been arrested on suspicion of causing some of these things, and they've mentioned an individual's name. So what? Is for some people more of a citizen than me and you? I mean, so this whole idea, this logic really is lost to me, honestly. Mm -hmm. And you see, sometimes when we get this opportunity, it doesn't mean that we are the most intelligent or the smartest people in this country. It's as a result of an opportunity that we've gotten. Are the NDC saying that they do not believe in the rule of law anymore? And that because a CID has done a professional, has done what common sense would tell you to do if somebody's name has been mentioned, or there are certain people by dint of certain uh, alliances or attachments, you want to make sure that you actually um, strike that out so that you would concentrate on an investigation. Because people uh, almost have, would have a tendency of trying to uh, divert attention, would even mention people's names. What is the big deal about it? And you see, when you do that and you want to just oppose that to the kind of governance that they, they actually, the stewardship that they actually uh, bequeath us with, uh, mm. with, and you do a comparison, they'll say, oh, you're doing equalization, or that you promise that you do something totally different, so you can't go back and scrutinize their track record. How many people uh, did they arrest in this country using the same Rambo style uh, accusations that he's talking about? Has a, for some people been arrested in a Rambo style? No, he's been invited. Right. And even in this particular instance, you can actually go with your, with your, your lawyer as a representative to make sure that your rights have not been infringed upon. So I don't see what the big deal is. It's almost, it feeds into that siege mentality. Let's create an impression that everybody is against us and aggregate people who feel they are marginalized and everything and use that to win political power. But Ghanaians have become more discerning today. So that communist inferior tactics is not going to wash. The truth of the matter is that if you want to do a comparative analysis of the governance that you bequeathed that for eight years and what is going on today, it's clear. I mean, you can, you can sit here and say that you haven't seen the factories. But the factories are there. 57 of them are working. Mm. So if you haven't seen them, it's up to you. But the people who are working within those industries, who are in those communities, know that they exist. The, the, the companies that have gone through the processes and have had their uh, funding proposals accepted by the various uh, finance houses are also there. Right? Those who have gone through the process and have had their proposals approved also are there. So, I mean, in the final analysis... So, so your point so, is that it's not government covering its failure, as No, you but, argue. I mean, that is ridiculous. It's also preposterous to start with. Why would government want to, for instance, be involved in what the police CID is doing, for instance, in the, in the case of pe things that people have a certain interest in? There's okay, kids that are getting missing, there's arson cases, and in, in your own words, you've actually uh, tried to creates that impression that there's insecurity in this country. And coming from even your flag bearer, creating the impression that there's something untoward happening in this country and you're going to match the MPP boot for boot. Now going back to give us a historical antecedents of where you come from and the fact that you have a revolutionary past and all of those things. I, if I was a police CID, I would look at those people first, even when anything happens in this country. Because it's clear, it's obvious. I mean, of course, without prejudicing what would happen in the court mm -hmm. case. I think that any allegation of that nature made against any individual actually is in the interest of the person to make sure that the full processes are activated so that if they are absorbed, they are absorbed. Why would you even want, in, in, in any case, to have a scepter of uh, something as heinous as this hanging over the head of your national chairman to start with? So for me, that in itself is preposterous, if you, if you ask me. The rule of law is meant to work 
this government is focused on executing and prosecuting the agenda for the reason why the Ghanaian people voted for it. Mm -hmm. And we will not sit here and have some George beat his chest and cast aspersions and make all sorts of claims that they don't stand for what? Okay. What, what, what are they not going to stand for? I'm the point is that we will not countenance that. So okay. if it's, it's, it's a quest. Mm. And I heard yeah. So so for you, I yeah, think Deputy if General fails, Secretary if, if, yes. and their communication uh, director speaking go, this. And uh, I was extremely if disappointed. If it fails to go, the police should move in and arrest. Yes, of course, why okay. not? I'm they grateful. should do that. And the NDC can do their works. I'm grateful. Some yeah, you I mean, I mean the, the only man in this we'll, country. We'll Come on. on. You see the on 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 open display, the arrogance. Of power. You started the arrogance. Uh, you started uh, the conversation. Uh, please, yeah. don't, 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 don't. He started the conversation. Okay. Using Allow him. I'll, gi I'll give you the chance. All of those I'll give what you the is, chance to, what's arrogance to, of power? To, to, to react if you want to. You see, yes, the, you see the arrogance of power on display, you know. But unfortunately, the arrogance of power never lasts when we get to the ballot box. You understand me? You can suggest that the NDC is not respecting the rule of law. What we have in this country today is not the rule of law. It's an abuse of office, an abuse of power. And we, it, it, it behoves on every good thinking citizen of this country to rise up against this government. Uh, uh, and George, rise up uh, against this abuse let of me power. Come in because you're making a second submission. Why, why would you call a, a placement an you really have an issue with words. Be, be careful, sir. Uh, uh, Sam George, why would you call an invitation by a police agency an abuse of uh, the rule of law? If the police has been consistent in their actions, when Sexy Dondon, the gentleman who is in court for the murder of J.B. Dankwa, made the allegation in court that senior members of the NPP were the ones who contacted him to murder the sitting member of parliament, has the CID invited any senior member of the MPP? Is that not an allegation? But four legs good, two legs bad? This one, you don't know the identity of the people who they claim are making those allegations. Who have they arrested? Where is the fire service report that says that the fire that happened in Kumasi was arson? You can't just call a fire arson. I mean, this, there, are, there are questions that anybody who has his head properly screwed on, who is thinking, would ask. But when you are full of the arrogance of power, it will make sense to you. What we are asking is, show us the fire service report that shows that the Kumasi fire was deliberately started. Then show us the individuals who you have arrested and put them before court. And let them mention Ofosuan Pofo's name. And then you establish. And you see, when someone's name is mentioned by a criminal you've arrested or an alleged criminal, you don't take the word of that person and on the basis of that start inviting everybody. Ah, then anybody who has been arrested for armed robbery can just sit down and say, but President Akufado sent me to do it. Will you go and arrest the president? Or will you invite the president? Or tomorrow we arrest somebody selling we, and then the person says that, oh, Eric is the one, Eric Chum is the one who asked me to go and sell it. So then, boom, invite Eric. That is the kind of thinking that they are espousing. That anybody makes an allegation, mm. the police CID, that we pay with our taxes to do investigation, we will not do any investigation whatsoever to determine the veracity and determine if there's even any connection between that individual and the person that they are alleging. Then you all of a sudden invite the person because it sits inside the settings. It's, it's not the beginning of the investigation. Oh, please. You see, you see, before, before you even invite somebody, mm. there are certain things that should make logical sense to you. How can you invite Chairman of Pofu? Over the kidnapping of the three girls in Takrade, when first and foremost you you have already sent you the same police ID, you have sent a Nigerian to court as being responsible for the kidnapping of those girls. That Nigerian tried to escape police custody and named one of you your po new police your own as one of his accomplices in helping him escape. You the same police ID. You claim you know where the girls are. All of that time, it was not a fusion before. What kind of investigation are they doing? Okay. If the police CID, and I'm mentioning her name, if it hurts him, I don't care. Uh, uh, we will uh, mention uh, Mami Yatiwa Ado because she's the director general of CID. We pay her with our taxes. She's been paid to ensure that the CID does investigation. If she wants for someone to come and do the investigation for her, she should state it.
She should admit that she's incompetent, that she's failed at her job. She's been promoted for doing nothing by the president. And we would let Ofosu and Pofo go and sit in the CID and help the CID do their work. I'm grateful. Eric, uh, come see, in and then I mean, we, we can I, move I, to I, another topic. I feel that what's important, what is most important is that um, whatever is done is entrenched in our constitution. The fact mm. that whoever is invited is given the rights that is bestowed to them by our constitution. I have absolutely no problem with the uh, CID inviting, extending an invitation to anybody in this country in a quest to get to the bottom of an a matter. It doesn't really matter what it is. So this position that has been taken by the NDC, and it's not just him. Yesterday I heard some of the commentary, and I was uh, extremely disgusted with even the tone and the sort of bravado and the abrasiveness that they were coming out with. And I'm saying that. If that is what they think that would, uh, would, would sway anything, then they, they've gotten it all wrong. Because government is committed to making sure that the country stays together as one. So if it's part of the whole uh, apparatus that let's create a certain state of insecurity, mm -hmm. then the law would deal with them. And I'm saying that. So if you have someone like Sam George sitting here, beating his chest and pointing fingers and casting aspersions and all of this. That is not what is going to deter government from focusing on what it's meant to do. This has absolutely nothing to do with government. The police is doing its job. You see, the same people will sit around and say that we should actually engender uh, institutions to be strong. Mm -hmm. And our institutions are doing their work within the confines of the constitution that we've all agreed that we want to uh, be governed by, and they have issues with it. And that is a stop double standards that I have a problem with. And if you want to even give examples where you would stop me because you, you say that I'm doing equalization, you want to give examples of that. It's not consistent with the approach that is being taken by Sam George today, this morning. Because the truth of the matter is that the police is meant to do its work. They will get to the bottom of the matter. Anybody that is mentioned would have to be spoken to. Mm. And then when they get to the, they, if you absolve yourself or it, it turns out that there's nothing on tour that has happened, you can, you're free you to go. Work. I mean, I don't but, see but, what the but big But he raises is. An, a, a fundamental issue. It, 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 um, is it legitimate to be asking that? The, the fire se service report, perhaps detailing that indeed what happened in Kumasi is asking, it should be made public. Is that legitimate? <laughs> you see, you see, again, this is the issue to do with the double standards I'm talking about. You remember there were fires in Makola and Kantamanto mm -hmm. in times past, mm -hmm. where apparently some people were even brought from the uh, FBI to come and do investigation in this country. And they made ac accusations that was actually coming from elements within the MPP. Did we see the report? Was no. anybody invited? No, no but, they, so, but anybody no, let me finish. Let me, let me, let me, let me, please allow me. Let me make another point. You see, you see, you see, you see, so, suspicion of arson does not necessarily mean that the full report has already been done. So, okay. for instance. So the report is, the, the, is not been yeah, done. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't work for the fire service, for instance. But I'm saying that once some individuals have been apprehended on suspicion of causing those fires, and it's purported that certain names have been mentioned, it's only commonsensical that those individuals will be subjected to a certain kind of interrogation to get to the bottom of it. I don't really see what the big deal is. I don't, honestly. Okay, I'm grateful. Let's move on. Uh, if you take a look at uh, page 17 of the Guinean Times, uh, the uh, leader of the group was discharged, others were uh, left in place custody. Uh, we're also told that a total of 81 more, uh, including two women, uh, believed to be members of the group, were picked up uh, for agitating for autonomy. Uh, the police commander, Walter Radio DCOP, Edward Odro Quarting, uh, said that he led a team to uh, pick up the 81 of them. Uh, he confirmed that to the Times. He said that the arrest followed intelligence reports gathered by the police. Now, eight other henchmen of the group were readily identified during screening of the suspects at the Volta Regional Police Headquarters. According to DCOP Quarting, the suspects were arrested in the morning while they were getting set for a massive demonstration on the streets of Ho to demand the release of their leaders without prior notice to the police. The regional commander revealed that 54 of the suspects 
uh, in Ho, uh, arrived in Ho on a bus from Southern Volta, while others uh, turned up from Hoi and its environs. So the commander said they were arrested because they did not inform uh, the police before uh, massing up. That's, according to them, violating the Public Order Act. Eric, let me start a conversation with you. This issue is beginning to uh, build up. Are we, are we getting to a point where we can see an end to it? Well, uh, it looks like um, it's been unraveling for quite a while. Mm. Uh, I know for a fact that somewhere in 2017, uh, these same individuals were apprehended and were actually cautioned and bonded to be of good behavior. But then it actually predates 2017 where there were certain agitations for them to succeed from, from Ghana, which for me is an extremely uh, serious matter because mm. it actually uh, affects the very fiber of our country in terms of that cohesion that we have. And Ghana, Ghana is a unitary state. So you can't just wake up one day and decide that you don't want to be part of this country and all of those things. So I'm sure that the processes are being uh, activated to ensure that one, if it's actually more widespread than it is, then it's, it's, it's actually dealt with at a certain point, so that's nipped in the bud. But then uh, some people have made the, uh, the commentary about the fact that it's a, a certain right that they are uh, privy to and that they, they should be allowed to do whatever it is that they want. That I disagree mm. because we have to create within a certain uh, of the constitution that we've all adhered to. Now, I know that yesterday the leader himself was giving bail. Uh, I'm sure it's probably in relation to the fact that he's a bit. Uh, 85, 85 years, years old, old is a bit uh, in terms of age. So uh, that is what has happened. I believe strongly that it has to be dealt with and it dealt with with this much. Um, of course, but you don't want to also urge some kind of caution in terms of this. You know, sometimes people use these things as platform for, if you like, popularity uh, uh, shows or is there 15 minutes of fame. You know, so that you don't get other uh, elements jumping on this particular thing to create chaos in this country. So we need to deal with it. It's almost like uh, being in the hearts and minds of various things. Uh, if the specific reasons and issues, uh, it looks like this thing has festered over the period, uh, we get to the bottom of it. Of course, in terms of the legal processes and what it is that we have to do to make sure that this thing is nipped in the bud. We also have to go beyond that to have a certain understanding of what the even uh, nuances are. Why they are why agitating. there's a certain uh, uh, clamor for uh, secession or mm. succeeding from Ghana and everything so that it can deal with some of these issues. I think that over the period, I mean, uh, you would have individuals holding uh, different views as to uh, the roles and the play where they, 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 they fit in within this whole unitary state. But the point is that uh, that is what the Constitution says. Uh, it's an extremely serious matter. Uh, I'm not too sure. I'm not a legal person, but I think that it's almost bordering on treason. Yes, to, yeah. to, and all mean, of that's the charge. Yeah, so which is extremely one of the high crimes that we have within our criminal uh, justice system. So it's important that it's dealt with, mm. but again, I think that we need to go beyond that, engage the various um, opinion leaders and stakeholders within those environments to get to the bottom of the matter and have almost like a two-pronged approach in terms of dealing with this matter. All right, S uh, Sam George, I, I come to you, but let me get Johnny to take a few comments and then uh, you can come. Johnny. Senior Bright, good morning. Um, what's up, says, I'm currently in Bimbila. Rumors of war at Chamba, Bimbila. Please let your people cross check. While I'm on Akwitia, Honorable of Usuampofu was only invited, and if truly he's innocent about it, why wouldn't he go for an interrogation as arrogant Sam George putting out there as some NDC national executives? He is not guilty until he's proven guilty. So, what are they running from? 
when you are in a country and all what the politician thinks about is winning the next election, trust me, the country will remain sta at a standstill. The ruling government sees everything uh, good uh, and the opposition sees everything to be bad. What uh, they all do is to think about their selfish interests, greedy politicians in Ghana. Thomas Akugri in Zebula says, the invitation of the chairman of Uswampo by the police CID is misplaced. This super incompetent director of CID who was, who was indicted in a similar leaked tape said it was doctored. Now she has the nerve to intimidate others. Or should have been fired by now and not allowed to waste public money in the name of salaries. Good morning, Senior Brighton, to your panelists. I agree with Jata that we, the citizens, are not angry enough. The Crime Investigation Department or the Criminal Investigation Department under the leadership of Madame Tiwa is nothing but a colossal failure. She is incompetent and not fit to head the department, not to talk of even considering her for the IGP position. She's embracing, embarrassing us with her leadership style, and uh, that must stop now. Ibn Atik in Kumasi. A.U. Farouk in Tamale says, good morning. So where are the kidnapped girls? The incompetent CID boss told us they are in safe hands with them and will soon re be reunited with their families. MPP will not be in power ever, and the chairman uh, forever, and the chairman of Osampo will not honor the irrelevant invitation by the MPP appointed CID. Are we serious in this country? This policewoman said she ha she knows where the girls are and now invites another person uh, by suspect and a suspect and the policewoman is still uh, living. Uh, God have mercy and we're watching American and European uh, how they do this well. The Americans and Europe Musa uh, Mutala from uh, Majo. And good morning, right? Please, I need answers to these this, these questions. Uh, one. Was it not Tiwado Dankwa who told the whole country that she knows where the whereabouts are the three Takradi uh, girls and that they are safe? What assistance again does she need from the chairman of Fuswampafu? Was it not the spiritual father of President Akufuado, uh, Prophet Uwusu Bempa, who told us only a few days ago that he knows where the kidnapped Takradi girls are? What assistance again does the CID need? Is it because she is in the race vying for IGP posts uh, that she is seeking to be popular among her contenders? If Ghana was a serious country, Tiwa Dudankwa should have resigned as CID boss by now. And you put those ones in uh, bold text. Why are uh, the so-called political neutrals who claim they love peace, uh, the country, to love the peace, or where are they? Uh, Faras in Tamale, you're asking. Uh, Abedi, Kwada, so AK Big Shoes. Uh, good morning, champion host. Thanks to CID for inviting the national chairman of the opposition, NDC. Samuel of Usampo for again of our fires, kidnapping, and kudos to the High Court for granting a 12-month extension to the Electoral Commission to implement the RUPA. Uh, thank you very much. Philip Kwabre Kasam says, Good morning, uh, Mr. Host. I am pleading with the NDC party to stop the propaganda and lend the MPP government to re rule the nation and come again. Uh, come what may, President Akufuado will lead Ghana to the promised land. Uh, thank you. Mike Lamini, UK, says, It's welcome news that uh, Ofoswan Pofu's name has been mentioned as the suspect behind the recent state, state of kidnappings and fire outbreaks in, in Kumasi. Ofoswan Pofu's leaked tape talking about how the NDC's plans schemes of Ghana are uh, unsafe by kidnapping people is a worrying situation and all this is just to um, it's just for the selfish political interest of just one person, JDM, who is still not content with all what he has acquired lawfully and unlawfully. And the court should give all the needed attention. This case is just because of Uswampofu cannot take Ghanaians for a ride. Right. I want this question to be answered by the MPP man. When the finance, finance minister exposed armed pictures uh, to harm and uh, was actually killed, uh, Ahmed, I'm sure you want to me, is Ken invited. Ken is not the finance minister, by the way. Uh, but you're asking that uh, when uh, Swale was killed, is Ken, was Ken invited for questions? Why is the president's appointees making people think twice about them? Finally, please, we love and respect TV3. We don't need uh, first comers coming to parliament to talk disrespectfully about other people like uh, they own the country. He should respect the president of Ghana. For eight years, they allowed... Uh, army worm from China to invade our water bodies and yet they accuse MPP. Don't entertain this kind of language. No wonder he was slapped. Yeah, Laboni. Yeah, uh, we don't support the slap and we don't think that anybody uh, has been disrespectful. If you have you express it, don't attack people. But this is what uh, uh, Telapia wants us to know. It says, aftermath of militia documentary protection in chains. And you can see a gentleman uh, sitting behind a desk with a pen in hand. He has a sheet of paper in front 
front of him and uh, is being clipped on both sides. One, uh, the hand holding the, there's a fat ball, iron ball holding the, uh, his pen and his hand on one side and it's been labeled lawsuit. On the other side, his camera is there sitting idle and says government boycott. Meanwhile, you have a policeman standing behind, this time not in a mask, but it says free to work without fear of favor. And many of you have said that, well, the culture of silence is coming back one more time again. Uh, right. Grateful, Johnny. More of your comments will be read in the course of the show. I know, George. Okay, uh, do the wrap up for me. Uh, the police grabbing 81 more suspects. Uh, the leader of the group granted uh, bail. Uh, the others are in court. The case itself is in court. Where do we go from here? Right. I mean, the issues of secession are one that any government who wants to treat seriously and look at critically. However, you need to ask yourself the approach. I mean, these issues of secession didn't start today. Mm. It's read his head under former President Rawlings. It read his head up under former President Kufo. You understand me? Um, I mean, this particular trend of secession, yeah. I mean, the 50 years came just towards the end of Rawlings's term. Mm. You understand? You know, remember the plebiscite was done under Nkrumah, right. and this claim is done is that the 50 years are up. The 50 years actually hit just after Ghana at 50, mm. under President Kufo. And that's when they said, okay, the plebiscite is, is, is the, the duration of the plebiscite is up, we need to go. There was a certain tact that President Kufo used in handling this matter, such that you didn't have the kind of drama you're seeing currently. Under Professor Mills, I'm aware that this issue came front and center at a certain point in time. He read his head up again under President Mahama. It's come up again. There's been a certain finesse with which government has handled this matter not to make it a front burner issue, not to give it a certain oxygen that paints the picture that you have a secessionist movement in your country. And it's been dealt with and quelled consistently by other governments. I mean, to have a joint military police team go in and pick up an 85-year-old man that he's capable of leading a secessionist movement, you say there's going to be a big demonstration, you pick up 81 people? I mean, that's not a big demonstration. If they flouted the Public Order Act, I mean, step in. That's what the stop. says. Step in. I mean, the laws are clear. If they flouted the Public Order Act, yeah, you can step in. But I mean, the, the, the way we seem to be playing this issue up, because this thing's been in the news for the past two, three months, right. you know, we need to be careful. You need to be careful the picture you are sending. It may, it may, it may not necessarily be, you may be cutting your nose to spite your face. And so government needs to be mindful. The security apparatus needs to be mindful. There's a lot of this work that is done not with the open show of state might, but with the tacit ability of state intelligence. You are able to quell many of these things and frustrate many of these actions. And so, I mean, the government must develop a certain, a certain savviness for it in its approach. I mean, confidence building. You saw confidence building at Ayawa, so now this one too. I mean, there, there's a certain open show of state might, which is not always the best way in dealing with some of these issues. Are we going to countenance a session? No. We won't sit down as a country. And, and, and listen to talk about portions of the Upper East, portions of the Northeast, mm. portions of the Northern, portions of the OT, and portions of the Volta. Okay. So about five regions. <laughs> Someone says they are carving it out mm. and going. No, I mean, I mean, for me, the whole conversation around it, it's laughable on a certain level. Yes, you have some senior statesmen mm. who believe in that course. However, like I said, with the use of the state intelligence apparatus and tacit diplomacy, it's, it's, it's a better and more cultured way of containing a, what, what is a very small fringe than to give... When you do these things, how Boko Haram started, and I'm just using this as an example, was a small fringe, very little extremist group, but then there was a certain high-handedness, a certain attempt to make them give them a certain importance they didn't have. That attracted a certain external support by, you know, there's that always that, in quote, they call them what, lunatic fringe. That is always there to support such movements. For me, my point is we shouldn't be having these guys 
on the front pages of our national dailies. This conversation is a conversation that our intelligence agencies must be, these are fires our intelligence agencies must be putting off without bothering behind, the ordinary Ghanaian behind, behind the, the scenes. Okay, grateful. We've hit the top of the hour. We'll have to wrap up the conversation. I'm grateful for your time. Sam George is MP for Ningo Pram Pram. I will a member of the MPP team. Uh, stay with us here. We have sports. Another comeback. Stay and watch that. Good morning once again.